So he'd buy them and he'd use them and he'd run them into the ground and they'd be stuck with rolls and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
an extra protection from just signalmen to send, sending each other bells. <coughs> and that's what these, these machines do. We've got, a, we've got a plunger here, which if I push that button, that will ring a bell in Wittersham Road. <coughs> on Wittersham, Wittersham have exactly the same instrument, and he has Rolvenden on it, so that it knows he's communicating with Rolvenden, and I'm communicating with Wittersham using this. So I can send him bells, and there's a code of bells, and he can he can respond and say, yeah, the line's clear to, for you to send me a train, but I will not be able to get that, that drawer open. Yeah. Because the, because the ele electro I was going to say electronics, it's not electronics.
the hills are the farms and the cottages. <laughs> They're not hills, they are of course islands. You build the railway on the bottom of the seabed. Wow. Where we are is, was absolutely navigable. That's why Bodium Castle was built. The French would come into exactly where we are right now and they would ram the ships up against the seashore during the conquest. They would steal cattle sheep, set fire to cottages, and then being French in the afternoon they would eat local children. Yeah. <laughs> Henry the Eighth, famous for many, many things. One being he built the Tudor fleet, the precursor to today's Royal Navy. The largest ships in the Royal Navy were not built in Portsmouth, but the Chatham. They were in fact built in the field we're going to be through in about 20 minutes' time. This is where the Tudor fleet were built. Had you been here in, say, 1640 or the back of 4 o'clock, there would have been lots and lots of men of war at anchor exactly where we are now, awaiting a high tide to lift them down to the dockyards in the field here. Now, Tenterden is a sank port because it's where the guys that worked at the dockyards lived. So it was, in fact, a tax haven. So we're on the bottom of the seabed now. Uh, we're going to go over lots of level crossings. It was the reason we couldn't make trains, first of all. Barbara Castle said, you children are not going to take the little trains over level crossings. So it's imperative you guys wave at level crossings, please. We need to do it for two reasons. One, it really pisses the drivers off. And one, I want to see if anybody who owns an Audi will accidentally wave back. Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 1703 is a, a great storm, nicknamed by the people the Tempest. And uh, where we are uh, uh, is a reverse tsunami. The, the sea pours out in this direction uh, something like 25 miles and never returns. 4,000 sailors lose their life on deal that one evening. Uh, this eventually becomes salt marsh swamp, absolutely useless. Clever old Dutch come across and they say, well, give us a land, we will drain it. No, they said, give us a land, we'll drain it. Help yourself, said the farmer. So they put in all the dikes, the canals, the ditches that you're going to see. And they make the land arable. A couple of years of rain and it desalts. And they bring with them something that we've never heard of in this country, being hops. Now, not long ago, we would all have drunk beer. You couldn't drink water, it was full of pee and poo, it was horrible like mum's soup. So we all used to drink beer. You would have beer for breakfast, beer for tea, beer all the time. But it would go off very quickly. So hops on the street, it would have been in six months, but it was actually the Kentney Sussex Railway. Um, it was bust before the day it was built. Uh, and immediately it was nationalized. Please yeah. just close it. So all around right here was where hops were picked. Now, listen, you get two months holiday in the summertime. It's not set far to council recycling bins, it's to pick hops. Is to pick apples. You would come down with your mum, your dad, your granny, your auntie, <clears throat> you'd be here for a couple of months and you would live in a little hut somewhere. Traditionally you would come down from Kent or the east end of London where it was poor yeah. and dirty and poverty and you'd have a great time. You'd be here for two months, mum and dad would earn good money, work hard <clears throat> and you guys could just run wild in the countryside. Um, setting fire to council rubbish. Uh, <clears throat> the, the hops are pretty much gone all nowadays. All the south facing folks over here uh, are vineyards for uh, a lot of French champagne houses like Pinkest Park, New Wine. It's um, chalk, south facing, and uh, it, it, it's ideal. So we're going to go over a level crossing in a minute into Rovinu, where you've already been. So this is where we hold the working engine. Uh, the rest of them, I'm sure, you've been showing you around in. Uh, in the shed at the far bottom. Alright. So the railway, uh, to be honest with you, is a little bit like Ryanair. Uh, we will get you to the country but nowhere near where you wish to be. So, I mean, like Wittersham, a little bit 10 miles that way. This is the original station uh, for the railway. We did go up the hill to about 1903, very well in 15. So, they, and, and those days, Tenterden Town, Tenterden was 4 or 5 miles north the line. plausible use and half a dozen guys under a tarpaulin in the field over there will have in the next year 
an engine back in steam wow. it's just jaw dropping what these managed to do how mm -hmm. first don't have any of the bits anymore you have to make every single element yeah. of the steam engine so the guard who is in charge of the train worryingly knowing him uh, is just going to check we're changing over tokens i'm sure you all understand the, the workings of tokens having been up in the signal box if you could tell Jim it would be good because he's no clue at all. <laughs> so we've got a big lump of metal that's been exchanged between the driver and the next train. Uh, that means we can then go out and then do it.